If there's one thing we've learned throughout all these airline devaluations, it's that it's smart to diversify your points and miles. And since credit cards are generally the number one way to bank your points, you should have a diverse portfolio of credit cards. I got a message on Facebook from Lance saying that he already has American Express Platinum and SPG cards, which he really likes, I guess, for the points on the SPG, perks on the Platinum. And he wants to get a card uh, that allows him to use points for statement credit or travel expenses. So right now he's deciding between the Barclay card arrival and the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which one should he get? Now, the beauty of the Barclay card arrival, you know, it's $3,000 after three months spent and you get 40,000 points. Those points equal a little bit more than $440 when you redeem for travel. They're not great for just straight up statement credit, but like most TPG readers are, if you're traveling, you can get really good value out of that card. And in the long run, you get, you're getting 2.2 cents, 2.2%, uh, a little bit more than that actually, in value back from every dollar that you spend. Uh, the Sapphire Preferred will give you 1.25 cents towards travel expenses per point, but uh, you earn two points per dollar on travel and dining. So if you were to strictly spend on travel and dining, you would get just over two and a half percent back, which is a little bit better than the arrival, but considering that the arrival includes 2X on all purchases, it's probably a better all around card if you're just looking to redeem for travel expenses. Plus the Sapphire makes you book travel through Chase Ultimate Rewards. The Barclay card arrival will let you buy whatever you want that's travel related and then you take it off your statement. So my advice, get both. Both come with 40,000 point bonuses. Uh, just make sure you can spend the 3,000 on each within the first three months. Uh, but if you've got a Bluebird and Vanilla Reload near you, that shouldn't be too hard. They both waive their annual fees for the first year, and both sign-up bonuses are worth, you know, four, five, six hundred dollars depending on how you value your chase points. So uh, they both also have non, no annual fee uh, products as well. So if you ever decide that it's not worth the annual fee, you can downgrade. So get the points, travel well, and then decide if the card works for you. Any other questions, follow me on Facebook, The Points Guy, backslash The Points Guy, or tweet me at The Points Guy.